Hello everyone. In the previous lecture, uh, we were discussing about the law of kinetic energy and the Fourier's inequality. And we had mentioned at the end that we would like to arrive at some kind of a condition which would enable us to state the, the, the requirement of equilibrium uh, in terms of a necessary and a sufficient condition. And we had also said that uh, that would be the principle of virtual work. Now, in order to discuss the principle of virtual work, what we need uh, is uh, to first define uh, something called the work function. So let us discuss that first. So uh, you consider two configurations uh, of a particular mechanical system, say x0 and x1. Okay, so let's say that this is the entire configuration space and uh, this is this point is represented by x0 and this point is represented by x1 and please note uh, that as we had uh, discussed and emphasized in uh, while discussing the preliminary concepts that these certainly do not represent any particular material point of a mechanical system okay so this point although it is represented geometrically like a point it captures within it all the information that is associated with the configuration of the mechanical system. Okay, so uh, so this is just a just an abstract way of representing uh, a mechanical system as it is in a particular configuration. This point similarly is a, 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 an abstract representation of the same mechanical system as it is in another configuration. All right. Now, uh, if we wish to go from x naught to x one there can be a number of different possibilities. In fact, there can be an uh, indefinite number of possibilities. So let's say that one such path is this. Okay, and we note that all the paths that we are going to consider will be admissible paths. Okay, and let's say that the work associated with this, the virtual work associated with this is given by W-1. Let us consider another admissible path like this. It will be W dash 2. Let us consider another uh, path like this. It will be W dash 3. So we can keep on uh, considering various different paths in going from X0 to X1. Now, um, because we are considering different admissible paths, the values of these virtual works W dash 1, W dash 2, W dash 3, they're all going to be different. Okay, maybe W dash 1 is less than W dash 2. And maybe w dash one is greater than w dash three. So uh, there can there can be so many different values associated with this uh, for these virtual works. But uh, uh, and suppose uh, suppose you imagine that you that you order them in increasing order. Okay, so suppose we have something like this. Suppose uh, just for just to concretize our example. Suppose w dash three is less than w dash one is less than w dash two and you can keep on doing it like this okay so both ways okay there can be other virtual works which are less than w dash three uh, there can be other virtual works which are greater than w dash uh, two and so on and so forth so uh, is there uh, something unique that can capture these values what i mean to say is that if see x naught and x one are two fixed configurations okay but we are seeing that the various works that we are taking or that we are that we are taking like this they are very much dependent on the path that we are choosing because as you all know the the work done is very much a path dependent entity so uh, would it not be good to have something unique that is just associated that is just dependent on this x0 and x1 what I mean to say is that which is path independent and that path independent quantity as far as the work done is concerned is something which is referred to as the work function as the work function okay and what is that so uh, if you consider these values to be part of a set and that set will be the set of all the virtual works possible the virtual work values possible considering different admissible paths in going from x0 to x1 then uh, there will be a least upper bound to this set okay so if we consider this thing okay so if we consider
these values to be part of a set and when I said I really do mean a set in the mathematical sense as we studied in our high school maths okay, so if you consider these values to be part of a set and uh, we we considered mechanical systems which do not possess infinite energy okay so so this is just a careful way of setting up the uh, statement which do not possess infinite energy okay which is basically to say most mechanical systems of interest especially of engineering interest okay so if you consider mechanical systems which do not possess infinite energy uh, so as long as we don't do that in fact i mean it's just a pedantic way of saying this but I mean, most engineering systems, like most, absolutely most engineering systems you can say will not possess infinite energy. So we are mostly safe here. Uh, so if you consider these values to be part of a set, then the then this set will have a least upper bound. Okay. We'll have something called a least upper bound so what is this least upper bound entity so we'll have a least upper bound let's call this w so this w is such that no matter no matter which w dash uh, uh, we choose this will be no matter which w dash we choose that w dash is guaranteed to be less than this w so it is in that sense that this w is referred to as the least upper bound okay so this is just a uh, set theoretic way of looking at it but uh, you understand what is going on okay uh, in a physical sense so uh, if we if we arrange all these virtual work done possible in increasing order ultimately there will be a an upper limit to it okay in a, in a very uh, a very layman kind of language if we say like that uh, probably it will make sense to you okay so of all the w dashes uh, if you consider there will it is guaranteed to be less than a certain value and that value okay of course you can have higher values then this you can consider something like twice w you can consider like thrice w or maybe w plus delta w something like that but all of those will be higher than w so among all those things there will be a least uh, value so which is why we call this as the least upper bound which is guaranteed to be such that all the virtual works that we are considering like this will be less than this okay uh, so it may seem like an unnecessarily complicated way of looking at it but there is a very nice utility uh, associated with this w which is that w is path independent so the moment you think about it uh, path independent okay all these w dashes okay these w dash are path dependent this is very important to note okay all these w dashes they are path dependent whereas this w is path independent okay which means that w is purely a function of the two configurations that we are interested in w is just a function of x0 and x1 it does not matter what admissible paths you, are, you may be considering okay the uh, associated with a pair of configurations there is a unique uh, w work function uh, which is such that no matter what admissible paths you may consider uh, in between them the work the virtual work associated with each of those admissible paths is guaranteed to be less than this w so this is a very useful quantity okay and in terms of this useful quantity uh, we can actually restate uh, our Fourier inequality which we were discussing earlier so Fourier inequality if we say that in rewrite that
Fourier's inequality can be written in terms of this w. So if we say that this w is less than or equal to zero, then it is automatically guaranteed that no matter which admissible parts you may be thinking, the virtual work associated with all of them is also less than or equal to zero. Okay, because all of them are less than w. So it's very neat. Okay, so all these w dashes you may be considering, they are guaranteed to be less than w, and because w is itself less than or equal to zero, so you can understand this this w dash will be less than zero. All right, so in that in that way, the Fourier's inequality can be stated in a path independent fashion. Now all this is fine. Okay, what about the principle of virtual work? So what we'll do is we'll state the principle of virtual work right away in terms of this work function. So there can be certain uh, certain and uh, quite a lot of subtleties associated with the principle of virtual work but at this point for you know in a very uh, again speaking in a very utilitarian fashion we don't have to go into all those subtleties it is enough for us to 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 state that uh, for the principle of virtual work we first consider the work function associated with two configurations and this w it can be uh, tailored expanded and written in this fashion as we have seen so many times uh, a couple of times earlier uh, delta w plus half delta squared w so this is the first variation of w this is the second variation of w and we can have higher order terms now uh, it may seem like a little bit of uh, of a jump to, to suddenly arrive at this but please note that uh, since we are talking about uh, w associated with with uh, different configurations it is very much in sync with whatever we had discussed earlier for example uh, first of all uh, uh, in terms of the calculus of variations what we had discussed for the for the integration i as well as later on in terms of the virtual displacements when we when we uh, arrived at a statement like this in our earlier lecture in, a, in one of our earlier lectures so uh, so written like this this is certainly not the principle of virtual work this is just the tailored expansion of the work function what the principle of virtual work states is that uh, the necessary and sufficient condition for a mechanical system to be in equilibrium is that uh, delta w must be equal to zero the, the first variation of the work function must be equal to zero okay so for equilibrium okay now uh, Remember what we were discussing in terms of the Fourier's inequality being violated uh, for that little example of a, of a marble sitting on top of a dome. Uh, there, uh, if, you, if you find out the work done by the force of gravity for a little virtual displacement of that marble uh, away from that equilibrium position, it will give you a, a positive value. But what we said was that because the Fourier's inequality is only a sufficient condition and not a necessary condition, so even if the force of gravity uh, does a positive work, we cannot conclude that the, that the uh, marble or the little ball is uh, not in equilibrium. Okay, and actually it is in equilibrium, it's just, in, just an unstable equilibrium. So, uh, like if we, if we really go into the deep details of the calculation, we'll find out that uh, even for such an example, it is the first variation which definitely is equal to zero uh, for that for that example. But uh, it's the second variation which is not zero, and uh, that can have some interesting discussions. But we, since we are not talking about stability right away, let's not get into uh, unnecessary detail about that. 
okay so what is important is that for equilibrium delta w is greater than zero and this is the principle of virtual work okay so of course i have made it rather simplistic if when i'm stating it like this uh, so uh, there are certain subtleties associated with this also for example the forces should not change discontinuously and uh, uh, we have to be careful about certain considerations but the good thing is that for the kind of systems that we will be interested in in our course of advanced mechanics of solids this is this is uh, going to be good enough for us now in terms of the actual operations associated with this principle of virtual work uh, what we'll do often is that we will decompose this uh, delta w and mind you that this delta w is a work function associated with both the internal and the external forces so what we'll say is that uh, uh, we'll decompose this from uh, as as as, a, as contributions from the internal forces and the external forces separately. Okay, so what we'll say is that this delta W uh, is equal to zero, but this delta W itself is contributed uh, from the forces due to the intern from the from the internal forces as well as those due to the external forces. So overall. What we have is the first variation of delta of W internal is equal to the negative of the first variation of uh, the work done external. Okay. Now I think in certain books or in certain resources, if you look at in the internet also, uh, sometimes the principle of virtual work is stated that the work done by the internal forces is equal to the work done by the external forces but uh, stated in this careful fashion i mean if you if you really take care of the science it is like the negative of it okay but magnitude wise it is the same okay now this particular form of the principle of virtual work uh, this is something which we'll be using time and again all throughout uh, our, our course of advanced mechanics of solids in fact this is something which we are going to use directly in our next topic of discussion which is the uh, the work done associated with a deformable body and that will set us up uh, set us out on on an, on a on a uh, rather intense discussion of all the uh, energy methods associated uh, uh, some of the important energy methods associated with deformable bodies please note that till now whatever we have been discussing that has been associated with uh, generic mechanical systems whether they were deformable or rigid it did not matter but from now on we will be specializing our discussion uh, uh, based on this principle of virtual work but applied to uh, deformable bodies all right uh, thank you very much we'll continue we'll start our discussion of deformable bodies from the next uh, video